use the kinetic theory of gas equation and the ideal gas equation to show that the kinetic energy of a particle is 3 over 2 kT. So we have the kinetic theory of gas equation and then we have the ideal gas equation and we use P equals nKT as you can see there's a K in the expression given above. I'm going to make them equal because uh, PV are equal. The ends will cancel out. Okay, but the thing is kinetic energy is equal to half m CRMS squared for one particle. But the thing is there's a 3 here, so I'm going to bring the 3 to the other side. And then I'm going to divide both sides by half to get that expression for kinetic energy. So the kinetic energy of a particle is um, um, 3 over 2 kT. Now this is the kinetic energy for only one particle. So if I wanted to find the kinetic energy for a lot, an n number of particles, I'd have, or the total kinetic energy, I'd have to multiply both sides by n for the total kinetic energy. So here's the expression. So last thing to know is that even though this says kinetic energy, because for ideal gases, the internal energy is kinetic energy because if you remember for ideal gases, there is no potential energy. So when they're asking about the internal energy of an ideal gas, they are talking about the kinetic energy. So this really here is the internal energy. Calculate the total internal energy of 0.3 moles of an ideal gas at 280 Kelvin. So this here, is the kinetic energy they're asking for and because they've given me the temperature I'm going to just use 3 over 2 kT to find the kinetic energy or the internal energy of just one particle so which I get 5.796 times 10 to the minus 21 joules but the thing is, I'm interested in 0.3 moles. So I need to find how many particles there are in 0.3 moles. So I'd have to multiply this by 0.3 times how much each mole is, which is Avogadro's constant. And if you multiply that out, you should find it's 147 joules for the total of all the, all the particles. Calculate the root mean square speed of nitrogen gas at 25 deg degrees Celsius. The molar mass of nitrogen is given. So this is the mass for one mole. Okay. So firstly, the kinetic energy, uh, because we've been given the temperature, so it's 3 over 2 times 1.38 times it's a minus 23, the Boltzmann constant, and then not forgetting to turn the temperature into um, Kelvin, I should I will get 6.17 times center minus 21 joules. So this is the kinetic energy of one particle. So what I'm going to do is this is going to equal one over uh, sorry, uh, two um, CRMS squared. So that's the kinetic energy. But the m there is the mass of one particle. So I need to find the mass of one particle. To find the mass of one particle, I can just take 0 0.028, which is the mass of one mole. In other words, the mass of 6.022 times into 23 particles. And I'm going to divide this by a goddess constant, 0 6.022 times into 23, to give me the mass of just one particle, which is very small. And now I can put it back into this equation. So I'm going to rearrange it first. So I'm going to do 2 times 6.17 times into minus 21. And then divide that by the mass of each, the particle. So 4.650 times into minus 26. And that's CRMS squared. So don't forget to square root. So that gives me CRMS is equal to 515 meters per second. 
Compare the room mean square speed of hydrogen at 200 Kelvin to helium at 300 Kelvin. The mole masses are given. Okay, so this I could, if I wanted to, calc I could calculate the CRMS of hydrogen and helium separately and then compare them. But I'm just going to use a proportionality argument here. So I'm going to say half mass of each particle CRMS squared equal to 3 over 2 kT. Because I'm interested in the effect on the root mean square speed, I'm going to make that the subject. Uh, but firstly, I'm going to just ignore all these constants. So I know that CRMS is proportional to the square root of temperature over the mass of each particle. Okay, so what's happened to temperature? So temperatures for the helium is three over, um, 1.5 times bigger. The mass of helium is 4 over 2. In other words, it's two times bigger. Okay, so it doesn't matter if it's mole mass because they're both one mole, so that we can just ignore the fact that it's per mole. Okay, so what was the total effect of that? So it's actually square root, don't forget the square root, so it's 1.5 over 2. That gives me times 0 0.86, it's actually smaller. Okay, so we need to give clear conclusion. So the uh, RMS of CRMS of helium is 0 0.866 times uh, the CRMS of hydrogen.